So here we're going to be looking at emerging technologies, right? When something or someone is emerging, that simply means they're coming to the forefront. They are becoming popular. They are a new sensation. They're a new thing. They're a new person. So when you have an emerging artist, and I'm already, so that might be someone who's an underground artist who is now emerging. When you have an emerging actor or actress, they're now becoming famous because of a few roles that they've done. It's more or less the same for technology. When you have emerging technology, that simply means that this technology is either being developed, has been developed and is just being released, or it's out there and it's now starting to make waves, as people say. Right? So that's emerging technology. New technology that needs to be adopted, that has just been created or developed. A word or abbreviation that gets thrown around a lot is AI, artificial intelligence. Now... On our phones, we might have a setting that says AI, smoothing, AI, this, AI, that. That's not actually AI. That's more a machine learning where it picks up on patterns and then tries to solve a problem, right? AI, artificial intelligence, has not been fully developed yet, but it is in the works. So this is also an emerging technology. A nice, simple one that most people might be able to refer to are, um, is 5G. As you guys might know, we have we had 2G, 3G, 4G, and now we're in 5G. Fifth generational mobile network, 5G. Now, some phones like mine here, I have 5G, but 5G is not yet widely adopted. Meaning, even in London, in some places in London, right? One of the busiest cities in the entire world. You go there and you don't get 5G in every single location. You get 5G in some hotspots. So this is a perfect example of emerging technology. Something that has just been relatively new to the market, relatively new being released. It's not being fully taken up by everyone yet. I, a couple of days ago, I actually bought my mom a new phone. It's not a 5G phone. And she asked me, why don't you get one that has 5G? And I said to her, honestly, spending an extra 200 pounds for a phone that has 5G when maybe only 10, possibly 20% of the UK has 5G isn't really worth it in my opinion okay so we have to look at what is emerging technology maybe give a few examples where possible and we have to then look at the 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 ups and downs of of, of emerging technology so the advantages and limitations of emerging technology that's what i'm going to speak about now so when we think of emerging technologies we also have to think about what are the benefits and limitations of having this brand new piece of technology okay I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. Think about it. We have 5G. Let's stick to the example of 5G. Now, whatever technology you choose in the exam or you choose to explain, think of the benefits and think of the negatives as well. 5G is amazing technology. It is, let's actually check the speeds. So 5G speed uh, average, right? So the average speed should be about... Um, 1.4 and 14.3 times faster than 4G. So whatever the speeds of 4G was, this is roughly going to be, if we take that in the middle, let's say 15, so 7.5 times faster than 4G. This is going to be amazing. Now, we're all becoming more connected, so being able to send and receive data quicker is definitely a benefit. But what's the downside of that? The UK is labeled as a first world country, meaning resources are plentiful and people can do what they want to some degree. So as a young person, you might think, oh, my friends have a 5G phone and I don't. So I actually want to go and buy a 5G phone. Now, the downside comes from actual landfills. So these are dumping grounds for garbage, let's say, being more filled when newer technology comes out. When something new comes out, people tend to get rid of the old one. And not everyone does it in a safe and secure manner. Some people literally just put the phones in a bin and throw it away. Even though that phone can be recycled and many components from that phone can be used to make something else. Right? So we have to look at the ups and the downs. The up is that we'll get much faster speeds when sending and receiving data. The down is that we'll have a lot more garbage in the world. Let's look at the metaverse, right? This is Facebook's new name and this new system they're trying to develop where we have essentially a virtual world where multiple people can connect and it should have less limitations and let's say a traditional game where you can only add maybe up to 128 players here you can have as many people as you want interacting in any way that you want benefits of this 
people can communicate as long and as much as they want on a service that's most likely going to be free, but you pay in having them collect your data. Downside of this, them collecting your data means you put all the information about you, yourself, your family, your friends, who you are, where you are, in the hands of a company that has been known to not hold data as securely as possible. So again, there we have the ups and there we have the downs. So whatever technology you choose, you need to be able to explain the benefits and the drawbacks of using said technology. Now, metaverse to me seems like a wonderful thing. Um, being able to actually, as a programmer or a game designer, have a set of tools to create what you want without doing it from scratch means that you can realize your vision a lot quicker. So rather than, I don't know, the next Grand Theft Auto taking seven, eight years to be completed, as a group of programmers, I can actually go in and use the tools given to me by the Metaverse developer system, for example, and create that game in a much shorter time frame because they have already tested everything that they need to test. And all I need to do is import and use the features I want. Downside of this, again, security is going to be a big issue. Wherever you have a lot of people congregating online to use a certain feature, there are always going to be malicious people, malicious software trying to get access to people's information. So is the security going to actually keep up with this, right? Having 1,000 people on a single server speaking and playing with each other, is that going to impact the level of security that can be implemented? So this is the train of thought you need to be having.